And now we can turn things over to our presenter for tonight. Kristen is going to tell us all about social media. So go ahead, Kristen, you can take it from here. I was just thinking, what if I don't consent to being recorded and it makes me leave the meeting? <laughs> that would be a really great discussion. So thank you so much for inviting me to speak tonight. This is maybe my third or fourth different time talking about marketing and social media. This is really structured as a foundational meeting and then asking questions that are specific to your club or your area. It's not going to be death by PowerPoint. I will share my screen at a couple points throughout talking about different things, just so that way we can uh, all make sure that we're familiar with the terminology that we're using and, and just take it from there. This is very, I'm, my background is in marketing and event management. I'm a professor at the University of Nebraska. I've taught social media marketing before. I've taught marketing. I teach event management within the College of Education Human Sciences in Lincoln. I really have a strong passion for this and I get asked to speak on it quite often. With that being said, I'm also an adept moderator for Zoom meetings. So feel free to raise your hand or type in the chat. I monitor those throughout. Don't feel like you have to ask questions at the end or wait to ask your questions. It's really supposed to be an interactive type of presentation. So if I'm showing something on the screen or I'm talking about something, pop up with your hand or, or put it in chat. And that's really how I want to structure this. So as a first question, so I can kind of figure out where everybody is, who in here has had experience with either Toastmasters or another organization having a page on Facebook? Just raise your hand. Okay, half. Okay, some virtual, some not. Okay, and then who in here has had experience with having a page on Instagram? Okay, that's good. That's good. All right, any Twitterers out there? Any tweets, twats? Okay, ish. All right. And then any of us actually create content for TikTok instead of just stalk, stalking others on TikTok? No. All right. Okay. So the main platforms that I have found that Toastmasters groups are using is mainly Facebook currently. And there are about half the groups that I have seen or been involved with that have been on Instagram. So I've been VPPR for three different clubs now, um, both in Lincoln and in Omaha, and have served in president role and I can kind of naturally gravitate to that VPPR role just because of my background. And it's really fascinating the things that people just don't think about. So I think first and foremost, the most important lesson that hopefully you take from this is not actually about the social media platform itself. It's about the actual content you're putting on the social media platform. So I think sometimes we all get caught up in like what's new or sexy or what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be on Facebook, so we create a Facebook page. We've got to get on Instagram because that's where all the young folk are. We need to recruit them into our club. Without actually thinking about the content you're putting on there, then it doesn't really matter what platform you're on because your content's not going to be engaging. One thing that's really important to think about is how these social media platforms work. Their whole method, their whole methodology is to sell attention. So their whole point is to keep you on the platform. So what one thing most people don't know, so first of all, Instagram is owned by Facebook, if you didn't know that. So it's different analytics on the back end. They do vary a little bit, but they are owned by the same parent company. I guess it's now Meta, right? But it's still Facebook for the social media verse. So one thing that's really, really important is to understand that when you post something on these social media platforms, it's actually not shown to all of your followers. So on Facebook, as an example, your post on your page, whether Toastmasters or other pages, it's only shown to about three to 5% of your current followers. So if you have a hundred people that follow you, 
It's only shown to three to five of them. And then based on your engagement within the first one to three minutes, then it's shown to more of your existing followers. So I make a post and it's shown to 5% of my followers. Some people like it, some people comment. And Facebook says, ooh, this is an engaging post. People are interacting with it. I'm gonna show it to 5% more and see how they do. Okay, they're in interacting with it, they're engaging with it. Okay, I'm gonna show it to 5% more. And that's how it's actually shown to more and more of your existing followers. It's very important to understand that this isn't going to people that aren't your existing followers. And so I, I do have, I am currently managing seven different Facebook pages for different organizations, including my college one. And so I'm going to share my screen. What screen is this? So you should all be seeing something that says UNL Hospitality Restaurant and Tourism Management. And this is kind of what it looks like when you're actually on the back end of the screen. You can all see that, right? Yes. Good. My page. All right. Awesome. So this is what it looks like when you're managing a page. Now, if this is your desktop view, this could be different on mobile. And the key difference between the mobile and the desktop that I really want to point out, it's my biggest annoyance working from a mobile phone, is on the desktop, they make it really easy to switch back and forth to see how you interact on a page. So I can switch to my own page and then I can just like this, I can comment on it, I can share it, but then I can easily toggle back to the actual page itself. So then if I'm commenting or liking, this would now say I'm commenting as UNL HRTM. On the mobile device, if you admin on a page, it automatically defaults to you interacting as the page and it is not easy to get back to your personal account. This becomes really important in terms of branding and engaging with the audience. So here's an example of what the analytics look like on Facebook. So they give you these key terms down here of how many people you've reached and how many engagements you've had. Now you can see there's only five people who have emoted it, right? So five people who have emoted it, and that's far different than 51 engagements. So what does that 51 engagements look like? So the 51 engagements could be people who physically clicked on a picture and scrolled through the picture. It could be someone who clicked on the one share because they want to see who, who shared it. It could be someone who clicked on to see who the likes were. So it could most likely, because I posted an extra picture, it's people who are flipping through the pictures. So 51 engagements. That's not bad, considering it's only been posted for four hours. One thing that is really good, and I do in all of my officer meetings for Toastmasters, is I always take a picture of us doing something really interesting, and I post it on our social media during the officer meetings, and then I make everyone engage with it in the officer meeting. So automatically we have all of our officers engaging with it. So I'll post like, hey, your Capital Voices or your Toast of the Town or your NMC Voices for Change is doing something really cool. And then I say, officers, we only have one to three minutes for people to engage with this post to be shown to more people. And I'll make everyone go on and engage with it. Now, of course, that is dependent on how many kind of existing followers that you have. So we're talking a little bit of the nitty gritty of the analytics because it's really important to understand. People say like, oh, I'm going to pay for an ad. And there's actually two different types of ads, and we're going to talk about that. Now, the reason why I pulled up the UNL HRTM page versus some of the Toastmasters pages um, one, because I don't necessarily want to share all the analytics of a fellow Toastmasters groups on a recording, right? Because that uh, maybe everyone in that club is not okay with that. Uh, and, and second, because the UNL page actually has a wide variety of posts, and I want to show you kind of what the difference in analytics looks like. So here's a post that I made today. I was in Kansas City. I just got back last night at midnight. And I took a group of students down there for a three-day tour. Now, how did we get so many people reached with this post in just under four hours? And the answer to that is because I tagged all these different people. When you tag people, 
When you tag organizations, you tag fellow Toastmasters clubs. When you tag the district, District 24, when you tag your area, they all have Facebook. They all have Facebook accounts. When you tag them, you naturally extend your reach because you, that post is now seen by people that follow those pages. They're also going to more than likely have a higher chance of sharing it. So for example, this was shared by the Crown Plaza and now it's being seen by their audiences. And that also figures into your engagements and your reach. So I highly recommend tagging. And of all the Toastmasters clubs that I've seen, a lot of them do not do a good job of tagging. I guarantee you that Jessica knows exactly when I post every single time, no matter what club I'm part of, because I tag the district. And I tag the district in the right kind of posts. And so we'll talk about that in a second. So here we have pictures. Pictures work beautifully on Facebook. They work beautifully on Instagram. People love to see the pictures. Um, when you are sitting here posting ads or you're posting um, other random facts, they don't always resonate as well because you don't see somebody that you know. Now, unless it's like hot news, like fresh off the press. You can also see that after a post is live, I think for three days, they also give you what's called a distribution score, which shows how, how it relates to your other posts in terms of other people. We, we're not gonna get into that today. We only have 45 minutes. That's more of an advanced analytics. Here's another post that I made, um, and you can see it's more pictures. 792 people reached, lots of people reached. People love the photos. They love to see and connect with people that they know. You have a flyer here, right? Not very many engagements, only 12 engagements. So this is something that's really gonna be a trial and error with your club in terms of figuring out what kind of content goes best on your personal pages. Uh, sometimes if you're a smaller local public club, you're gonna wanna see pictures of people that other people are gonna see in the community. If you're a specific subject club, like tech talkers, then you're gonna wanna post a lot more about the content that's going to drive these people in from all of these different places because they're being driven by your content because you're a content specific base club in terms of technology. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen right now so we can talk a little bit more about content. Does that make sense? And we got like in the weeds a little bit in analytics, but I think sometimes when people become an admin and they look at the back page, they're like, what do these numbers actually mean and what's important and how do, how do I kind of increase that? That makes sense. Tagging and all of those things. We'll talk a little bit about paid posts, but yes, Cynthia. Quick, quick question, two, two actually now is in regards to the, to the tagging. You had a lot of people there. Do you have those people's names somewhere and you can just uh, copy and paste in there or do you have to do them one by one? That's a great question. So because normally you wouldn't tag that many, right? This was a huge trip, three days. I, I just tagged them all in one post because I wasn't going to make 5,000 posts. So if I'm sitting here and I create a post, they pop up. So here, I'm just going to do the at symbol because that means I want to tag. So at symbol, you don't always have to do an at symbol, but that at symbol tells the system I'm tagging. And then you just start typing the company name. So here, I'm going to type in NMC Voices for Change, right? And then it just pops up. Super easy. I'm going to do Capital Voices Toastmasters. I'm going to do District 24 Toastmasters, right? So it's actually really simple. Uh, even though it is technically individual, right? Um, you just do the at symbol and you start typing in and it'll pop right up. Almost all of the businesses have Facebook or Instagram pages. Um, you can also use the admin system on here to, under publishing tools, that's over here in the business suite, to post on, on both your Facebook and your Instagram from one place. So you can tag them. Do you also have more advanced analytics in here? Notifications blocked. Ah, okay, so you can see the different reach and the engagement. So this is really helpful information to see what people are interacting with. Um, and then you can, of course, when you do post, 
create post up here, you can then say you want to post to Facebook and Instagram. We we'll can talk about that in a second. Does that make sense, Cynthia? Of like how to tag quickly? Yeah, you just have to know who you're tagging to and so that you don't mm. forget anyone. So I guess I would have to make sure that I have it all written down so I don't mm. forget. And then the other question that I had is that you were talking about uh, the first time around, it's only three to 5% of your current followers and you only have one to three minutes. Mm -hmm. So is there, a how do you know when's a good time to post? That's a great question. So there's actually a lot of research published on that of when the best times to post. I actually have a handout that I had passed out in a previous Toastmasters meeting and then also in Coach's Corner that I can send to Jessica to send out um, where we actually compiled based on the research the best times to post where yeah, Tuesday to Friday from 9 to 11 in your time zone. You never want to post on a Monday morning because everyone's Every business professional is trying to get through their emails. So they're not on socials. So, so there are there are recommended generalization times based on research, but it's also a huge manner of knowing your target market. If you're a night owl club, even though research says you post from 9 to 11 a.m., you should not post from 9 to 11 a.m. if you're a night owl club because all of your target market is going to be in the evening, right? So some of it is really trial and error. But it's important to adjust as you look at the analytics. So if you put, if you say, okay, for the next four weeks, I'm going to post Tuesday mornings from 9 to 11. If you're not getting engagement, then shift the time, shift the day. Uh, it's going to be very specific to your target market. If you're, I, so one of the clubs I'm in is Capital Voices. We are a public club that is a, a wide mix. It's a noon, like a lunchtime club. So a lot of us are working professionals from nine to five. So I'm going to post either between 9.30 to 11 in the morning or probably 1.30 to four, because that's when people are like playing a couple minutes of hooky from work to check their social media. They're not going to do it at home when they're in kid time. They're not going to do it first thing in the morning or right when they come back from lunch because they have to see what they missed. So it, it is a huge matter of just knowing your target market. So I would adjust, look at the research, start there, and then adjust as needed. Great questions. What other questions? Any others right now? I just shared one in the chat. Um, let me explain what I mean. So for example, if I am posting something using the business suite, and posting it to both Facebook and Instagram. I can take Facebook accounts, but in most cases, those will not transfer well to Instagram, correct? Because it won't have the same usernames. And I don't even know if that works at all, or if it only works if the usernames match perfectly. So when you're in the business suite, Instagram, if, you, if you're in the business suite and you start with an Instagram post, it translates really easy to Facebook because Instagram okay. is more restricted than Facebook. If All you right. start with a Facebook post and then try to go to Instagram, they typically make you edit some because Instagram's a square photo uh, and Facebook's more of a rectangular photo. And then Instagram has a little bit different character counts. If you're in the business suite, you have to use the at symbol. Whereas if you're just mm -hmm. posting in the post, then you uh, can just start typing in the name and it will pop up even without the at symbol. So the business suite is a little bit more specific where you have to kind of tell it that you're tagging it. And not everything always pops up nice and easy. Sometimes you have to go look at what their actual at symbol is. Um, but if you're using business suite to post to both, then I would start with the Instagram and then copy and paste it into the Facebook. Good to know. I think I usually do it the other way. So I most people that. do. Yeah. <laughs> most people do. Cause they're so used to Facebook. They're like, oh, whatever. I'll also post to Instagram. So one thing I do want to talk about, hey, Anthony, one no. thing I do want to talk about is I think a lot of times, I, at least I know in some of the clubs I'm in, we're like, oh, we're going to get new members. And Facebook tells me it's only $3 to boost a post and we'll have a whole new audience. And so they pay that $3 and then they don't quite understand what a boosted post is. And that's why I spend a little bit of time talking about the analytics up front 
with some of this terminology. Not going to get into the weeds with it, I promise. But as VPPR, you're always looking to try to recruit new members in to your specific club and make sure that your club is represented in all the amazing things that you're doing. So there's two types of advertising on marketing on Facebook and Instagram. The first is called a boosted post. And the second one is called a sponsored ad. So when you're scrolling and you see something that's like sponsored, it could technically be a boosted post or a sponsored ad. A boosted post is really inexpensive. It's like three to $10. And you're like, wow, that's a good deal. It's a horrible deal. And I'll tell you why. Because if you sit there and think about it, Facebook is saying, okay, I'm going to show this post, this content to three to 5% of your followers, your existing followers. People that already follow you because they're aware of you, they've interacted with you, or they're a member of your club. A boosted post means that you're paying money to just get ex more exposure to your existing followers. So you're paying $5, and instead of getting shown to 3 to 5%, you might get shown to 15% of your existing followers. That's why it's so inexpensive because they already know these people care about your content because they already like or follow your page. It's why it's so inexpensive. It's not helping you bring in any new followers whatsoever. A sponsored ad is way different. A sponsored ad is typically a little bit more expensive. They could be between $15 and $50, depending on the metrics that you wanna run. Sponsored ads are way more specific. You can go in there and because Facebook has been tracking you for a decade plus, 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 and they know all your demographics all the way down to posts you interact with, what political party you are, if you like seeing pictures of babies or not. Like they have all these analytics about you. It's kind of scary, actually. Um, so they know what you're going to interact with. So when you pay to sponsor a post, right, which might be the difference between $3 and $30, then that's getting shown to new people. So you can go in and specify, okay, I, I want this to be shown to people between the ages of 25 and 40. Females within a 15 mile radius who enjoyed these five traits and you can check them off. You can also specify keywords in there. You can get really specific on your target market. And this is where I think a lot of Toastmasters clubs who do invest in sponsored posts they say, well, we want everyone. And you don't actually focus in very specifically on what you want. Because of course now you want someone who can afford to pay the Toastmasters membership fee, you know, every quarter. You want someone who's gonna take the time to dedicate. It's not to say that college students can't do that, but you should have a, a type of target market that you're aiming for in your club. Those are two very different things. So when I'm sitting on different officer boards of different clubs or I'm asked to come in and speak or do a Q&A panel, oftentimes people are like, oh, well, we, we're just going to boost a post because you think it's getting shown to new people and it's really not. That's a very important distinction. So I would not waste your valuable club member dues to your club on a boosted post. There's many other things we can do besides a boosted post. It's a very important distinction. Any questions on that? Okay. It seems so simple, but then in practice. One thing that I've really been talking a lot about lately is now we are competing within our own Toastmasters clubs. This becomes really important, and this is where I do use Tech Talkers as an example. So before COVID, we were really kind of competing with other Toastmasters clubs based on geography. There were some clubs that were hybrid. There were some clubs that were online. But really, it was like, I live in Lincoln, and I want to drive to a club to get stand-up public speaking experience. So I'm in Lincoln. I have 12 different clubs here. I have three that are available at a time period that I'm good at. I'm going to go visit those three. And that's my sample set, is those three. I can experience them in person, et cetera. Well, now COVID has pretty much pushed all of us into online or hybrid formats. Now, some clubs have gone back to being only in person, but a lot of clubs are experimenting with hybrid right now. And so we're actually competing against Toastmasters clubs from all around the region and all around the world. 
in the air in the district training meeting in our i always forget what deck doc stands for but in the district officer training just last weekend they were talking about how many people outside of our district are actually now members of our district which was really really interesting because now it doesn't matter where you live you can log on to any meeting so if i say okay i now have between 11 and 12 a.m 11 a.m to 12 noon on a Thursday, instead of just looking in Lincoln, I can look in Omaha, I can look in India, I can look in the Netherlands, I can go anywhere in the world, as long as it's within that time range. So instead of just competing based on our region, we're competing now globally, which is not necessarily a good thing for Toastmasters, because <laughs> we're all poaching each other's members, right? And it's, it, it's become an interesting problem for marketing. So the first, when we used to market back before COVID, we used to market Toastmasters. This is Toastmasters. We are awesome. We are a professional development, leadership and communication, public speaking. We are awesome and excellent. And we're just trying to bring you into Toastmasters. And then you figure out the club that kind of works for you based on time and area. Now we're really cross competing with clubs. People look up Toastmasters and now you have a thousand different clubs to compete with. So how can you make your club stand out? Most of this is based on content. So I'm part of many different clubs. I'm part of a club in Omaha. And when you sit there and you're, you're talking about your content, this is where tech talkers, because they're very specific, and there are other clubs that are specific. I know Jessica's on here, so I can pick on tech talkers. So when you have a club that's specifically focused on a topic area, you're going to attract people from all around the region, all around the world, because it's so specific in that topic, and they're, these people are finding their, their teams, their peers, their peeps, their crew, whatever you want to call it, whatever industry you're in. They're finding people who are similar, and they they know that there's a high chance that they're going to resonate with the content of the speeches. So I'll, there goes my motion light. I'm not standing up. So when I was part of Toast of the Town, I love Toast of the Town. I love the people on Toast of the Town. They're wonderful people. It's a corporate club. I was the only person that was not working in that company, but I came in because I love the people. The content of those speeches I could have cared less about. Most of them were work specific. Most of them were very specific on NTT data or training or like issues with their tech. And I didn't care about that. I cared about the people. But that's where now I'm actually not a member of Toast of the Town. And that's because there's so many other clubs. And then I became a member of other clubs. And it just really became hard to value the time when you're logging into a Zoom meeting, right? You have to think about your value. I'm gonna stand up awkwardly and try to make my motion sensor work again. I'm too short for this, don't laugh at me. All right, so we really wanna start advertising the content. And so there's a club in Las Vegas, a Toastmasters club that I know a lot of people participate in because it's all focused on food. They're all longer speeches, it's all recipes and cooking techniques and tips. And they have people from around the country that attend that Toastmasters meeting because of the topic. So then you might sit there and you'll say, okay, Kristen, that's awesome, but not all of us wanna be a specific topic. I know, I get it, it's totally true. But that's what we should focus on in terms of our marketing. I can go to a Toastmasters club and put a great big beautiful picture of Anna up there. There's lots of beautiful pictures of Anna on the Capital Voices Toastmasters club, but those are recaps. And if people don't know Anna, they're not resonating with your page. So they're like, oh, cool. This girl named Anna, who I don't know, spoke about this topic last week that I missed. And so now even if I'm interested in it, I've already missed it. And it's so different from week to week. So advertising on whatever platform you're on, the content of your upcoming speeches is what has been really, really successful. So that's a lot of work on the VPPR and the VPE to work together to also help to coach members of the clubs of what could be a great generalizable topic that other people would be interested in and getting that kind of 
sentence tagline that you can put on your socials to bring people in, to bring guests in to your club to really learn about that. So instead of saying like, hey, check out what Anna talked about last week in her awesome Halloween outfit and how much fun they had. Sucks that I missed it, but now it's gone. I can't, I can't attend. I didn't know that it was going to be fun, right? Now I'm saying like, this Friday's meeting, Anna's going to be talking about all of the mysteries and sciences of the library book cataloging. I don't know. I just happen to know Anna works in the library. And so she, she now there's like a content and anybody that's like, oh, I think I want to attend. They could say, oh, that sounds interesting. I'm going to go. And then you're going to get guests from that. So that's really kind of one of the biggest shifts during COVID that we've seen is kind of shifting that marketing towards the content, whether that's a specific content like tech talkers or foodies or more of a generalizable content, but making sure you actually work with the speaker to figure out a little bit about what that content is ahead of time so that way you can market it appropriately. Doesn't matter what platform you use for that, but making sure that you're marketing the right things will automatically help to increase your engagement. It was a long monologue. It's like six minutes. So I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to take your questions, all your questions. You can just unmute and you can talk. You can raise your hand or you can type it in the chat. Ask away. Go ahead. Well, I am our vice president of education. Marketing for Carney Toastmasters, and I have to admit that I haven't done a really good job of it. One question I have is so we have all these people on this screen. How do I take a picture of that so I can post it somewhere? Absolutely, that's a great question. So, the first thing is that there's many, many different ways to take a screenshot picture, but the thing I'm going to talk about for just a second is the importance of taking the pictures without the people's names on it if you're gonna post it on socials. Because if you're posting a picture on socials that have names attached, you technically need waivers to be able to post those. Okay. And then some people might not actually want their pictures to be posted. So I'm gonna pull up on here. I'm gonna pull up NMC. Um, and then thinking about the way that you take it. So I'm going to, I'm going to answer your question very specifically, but I also want to show um, a couple different things. So here's NMC. Um, you can see there's no names on any of these pictures, right? And this one's a candid. So we were all being kind of silly. It's not as structured. And then you see one that's down here, right? Some beautiful people on our call today. There's no names on these pictures. And I'm going to show you the Zoom setting that you can do that, right? Um, I, d I do want to say, if you're taking a screenshot, be very aware of how your screen looks. So here, people get tired of just the little Zoom boxes, six, eight, right? Especially if you have low attendance, you want to make it seem like it's bigger than it really is. So when we have low attendance, I like to take the speaker view uh, in, a, in a large speaker view with a little ribbon because it makes it look like there's more people. Uh, and there could also be more people that you don't see in the ribbon, right? They can, and this is what we're calling the ribbon up here. So if you have a little bit of lower attendance, then you can, um, you know, you can pretend and imagine that there's more people in there. You're really focused on that big one. Um, look, there's Keith on here. So we've got all of our different screenshots uh, without our pictures. So how do we do that? So the one, if you're in a PC, I like to use the snipping tool. There's also shortcut keys that you can use through Windows. Um, you can also just click the print screen and go to Word or, or PowerPoint and just copy and paste things in there. But the PC, a Windows PC, if you just go to your little search bar in the bottom, type here to search, and you type in snipping tool. I wonder if it'll let me do that. Let me share my screen. The screen is this one. So if you just type in at the bottom here, you type in snipping tool, it will just pop right up. And then you can click new. And then it'll just let you choose the area that you want to snip your picture oh, in. Okay. Which is really, really nice. Now showing you how to turn off the 
video people's names. Mm -hmm. I actually have a document that has screenshots that I can uh, that I can definitely send out, but it's a feature in Zoom, and since if I share my screen, it won't show the Zoom control panels. It's harder to show, but essentially, if you go to your video settings, so if you go down where it says Stop Start Video, and I click the little arrow that's next to it, and go to Video Settings, then there's a little checkbox that says Always Display Participant Names in Their Video, and you would just uncheck that. And so that means that once you're actually in the Zoom meeting, every 10 seconds or five seconds that you're not moving your mouse, the names will go away, which is really good. Okay. So when I'm in and when I'm in like a sales type of call meeting, I always go in and turn that on. So I remember everyone's names <laughs> uh, or a classroom setting where I'm trying to pick on people. Um, but in anything I'm taking screenshots, I just go in and turn that off. So, okay. Very good. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, definitely. What other questions do we have? The question I have is, if you're only going to reach 3% uh, of your audience, how do you reach all of your audience? Is there any way to do that? Yes, and that is to create a truly engaging post or to pay a lot of money to boost. <laughs> so it used to be that, so there's all these different terminologies on Facebook, right? There's a page versus a group versus a profile. And what do all those look like? So pages really are, are public facing pages that anybody in the public can interact with and they can like. There's also things called groups, which you uh, kind of submit to be a group member. And those can be public too. Now, groups were super popular for a long time because if you were enrolled in a group and there was an update made, you 100% of the people in the group would get notifications about it. So it was really good. It was a much better alternative than pages because you could kind of build your community. Unfortunately, Facebook did away with that all notification about nine months ago, I think now. And so now, even if you're in a group, not everybody gets a notification. So some of the appeal of groups has has gone away just a little bit. Even the analytics have shown for populations that, you know, Facebook is between, you know, ages 18 to 60. But we all know that the younger generations aren't on Facebook. And after the election, a lot of people left Facebook. But they didn't delete Facebook. And one of the reasons why they didn't delete Facebook is because of the events setting. Facebook by far still has the best search for events. So under Facebook, you can share my screen again. So under Facebook here, they have this incredible um, section for events. And this will pull up the NMC events, but go under my personal profile here. If you go over here on the side and you do events, you can um, check out all of the local events that are happening. You can check online or local this week, um, what's going on. And people that don't post on Facebook, people that don't log on to Facebook, if they're sitting there saying, what do I wanna do tonight? I have a date night or I'm bored, or I want to hang out with my friends, or I'm looking for a mommy-daughter date night, they will log onto Facebook to check out the events. Now, you want to use events wisely, though, right? If you create one event for your club that's recurring, it will say that, right? So it'll say, like, this, this event is recurring every other week. And that's actually not good for you because it doesn't create that FOMO, that fear of missing out. They're like, oh, well, I'm not going to do it tonight. Or maybe this seems like an in-club or it doesn't seem special, right? Because it's like, oh, it happens all the time. So it's not important to go to. So it is extra work, but I normally recommend only posting um, the special events. If you know you have an extended speech, you know, a Q&A panel, uh, at some type of keynote, a level four or five. If you have guest speakers coming in, um, if you have a really solid schedule of content, then posting that on there, right, as an individual event rather than just every single club meeting. Not to say you can't do it, but again, it takes away some of, like, the sexiness of 
of if you're recurring and if they see it all the time. If people log on and they're always seeing it, then then it becomes kind of normal and routine and it doesn't drive as much attention. But this Facebook events is very popular with all the age ranges. And that's something that Instagram doesn't really have. And so that's something that makes Facebook unique. There's also things like Meetup, uh, meetup.com and LinkedIn. They all kind of have it, but Facebook really has kind of this market share on the advertising for the event space. So what happens when you say that you're attending? You know, they have those set up, uh, yes, attending, unsure, the three different things. So if you hit click one of those, what ends up happening? Mm -hmm. So if you, as a, as an individual person, like I'm Kristen, I decide I'm going to go to the art fair. So I click that I'm uh, interested or attending. So what that says is, I can show you on here, of course, now that I've stopped sharing. So I say that I'm interested, right? So here I have a lot of friends that are interested in things. So uh, I say I'm interested. So now all of my friends, so if I'm connected with all of you, so Cynthia, now you are like, ooh. I'm kind of interested in this Grinch Reese thing. And then you would see a little note down here that says Kristen's interested. Well, now you can reach out to me and say, hey, I saw you were interested in this event. Do you want to go together? So they're using it as a community builder. Okay. Um, so over here, you can see four people, uh, four of my friends are interested in this. So maybe I'll say like, hey, maybe I want to go to that because all my friends seem to like it, right? The disadvantage with this is if you're creating an event for your club and nobody's interested in it, then it can look bad, right? So same concept of taking a picture and making everyone interact with it in that moment. Then if you're gonna create an event, do it during your officer meeting and get everybody to say that they're going or to, to share it, right? If, if I'm down here and I see 74 people are interested in this, I'm gonna be like, ooh, this is kind of popular. Maybe I should check it out, right? Cause we've got all this peer pressure. Uh, but if I if I'm coming down here, all of these have like high numbers. Uh, you know, this one has two thousand people, right? It sticks. Uh, so here we go, right? So nobody's nobody's interested in this. Nobody says that they're going to this, um, unless I'm super passionate about that topic and I'm willing to be the only person to sit there uh, at a a book together event. Like maybe I'm not going to go, right? Because it, it doesn't seem to be very interesting because nobody's going to it. Um, so that's kind of how they're using it in terms of building in that community piece. Mm. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Question? Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Sure. How do you keep your information secure and safe? Mm -hmm. If you're on Facebook. I'm like, this person isn't who they say they are. Mm -hmm. And I had, I knew, because he came back around and said, you know, he says, oops, I'm sorry, I've been hacked. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. There, and then there was another one that I'm like, this person doesn't do this either. What's going on here? So I inadvertently says, Hey, I want to say thank you for for uh, your your speech because he was a Toastmaster. I'm a Toastmaster, and I know that he didn't give a speech last night. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, and sometimes that's just really hard. Like even the most adept person, you know, I I'm very well educated in this area. But unless I were to, if I'm applying for a new job, you know, I could easily get scammed or hacked by a, a fake job ad that's for a real company. You know, sometimes it's the, it's getting more and more and more advanced. And it's just kind of being on the forefront of knowing like, and trusting your instincts of like, ooh, this doesn't quite feel right. Um, but there is becoming a, a loss of trust in social media which will be very interesting in the world of marketing as well. People aren't trusting social media as much as, um, you know, as, as much as maybe like a, a, a verbal or a video word of mouth. So we're seeing a lot more in the video aspect because 
I can sit there and take a picture and add my own words to it. And it doesn't mean it's true. I could take a picture of Keith right now and like put in the, the subtext of the caption, like uh, this was the best speech in the world. And like, it's gonna win all these things. And this person's wonderful, but it's it holds no trust because they're just words on a screen that somebody made up. Now, if I have a 10 second video of me talking, saying these things, it involves more trust because you know me or you can hear the passion in my voice. You, you know that I care about this topic. Um, I probably have some credentials somewhere that you could put in the caption, but you're hearing my voice. You know that it's not doctored or made up most of the time. Uh, and, and then you post that and that's going to that's gonna involve more trust. And so that's becoming, that's partially why TikTok has become so popular. Um, and again, their analytics are different than all the other social medias because it's all the other social medias, you build your population, your followers first, and then you share content. And on TikTok, you share content and TikTok finds your followers for you. And so it's just a totally different a method. And I think it's kind of where Toastmasters will go. We have to look at copyright, proprietary information, uh, kind of different, different things like that. That's again, a whole nother thing. Yeah, create a deep fake, fake of me here, <laughs> Jessica. So I do want to be cognizant of time. I'm happy to continue talking. Um, I love this stuff. I could talk about it all the time. Cynthia and I were talking about like, uh, if there was continued interest of diving in deeper into different topics, maybe it could be a series and, or we could do like different things. Um, this was really like a 10,000 foot, like the beginner starter set of, you're a VPPR or another officer, where do I even start? Start with your content strategy, figure out your solid content you want to put on there, and then um, figure out the platform you want to focus on and kind of times to adjust around from there. Just look at the numbers and kind of, kind of adjust or play around. We can dive in deeper to any topic that you want um, in the future, and I'm happy to stay on and answer questions. Um, <laughs> Keith, Jessica, I want you to explain what deep fake is. So <laughs> um, I, you know, I am happy to share my email in the chat and you guys can send me questions. Um, and I'm always happy to come back. This is my second time doing this particular VPPR meeting. Uh, and it's always a lot of fun because we always have great questions. And it, this, there's 10 social media platforms and there's 10 different analytics and there's there's 10 different strategies. And then every single one of your target markets are completely different. Some are advanced clubs and some are not advanced clubs and some are content specific and some are not. And some are competitor clubs and some are social clubs, right? And so that they're all so different. It, it helps to kind of focus in on a specific topic or at least having specific questions in advance or whatnot. I think one of the things that might help is when Jessica actually posts this out on Facebook and actually encourages other people to look at it, that might generate some questions and also some topics that further people or other people would like to see a presentation on because this was very interesting. And the whole thing about getting to your audience, I mean, here's all these people that supposedly have liked your page or liked your group or been a part of your group. And if you can't reach them with a posting, it's kind of like, well, wait a minute, am I better off just sending them an email that probably goes into their junk folder and they don't see that either. But I mean, it's like, great, you've got this great platform and a great vehicle to do this, but you're not really reaching the people that you want to reach. Right. Email marketing is still one of the top three marketing things right now. But with the increase in platforms like Slack, I am suspecting over the next five to 10 years that will also go down. But you know, Kristen, I've been to other uh, presentations um, for VP Public Relations, and I learned more tonight from you than I have learned from any of the other ones. It, you're very down to earth, and you explain things very well. Even for someone who is technologically challenged like myself, I was able to understand what you were telling us. So thank you very much. Thank you. Helps that I'm a teacher too, right? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so uh, nobody wants to sit up at 9 p.m. at night and listen to a, a death by PowerPoint, I don't think. So.
so. <laughs> well, I am always happy uh, to come back. Cynthia, Jessica, anything that you guys need. It's, I always love, love this group. And uh, that's why I'm in Toastmasters, right? Yeah, and we meet every third Wednesday <laughs> at 8 p.m. to talk about PR and social media. So everyone is everyone is welcome back. And as Kristen kind of alluded to, if there's any specific topics you want to discuss, let me know and we can get that on the agenda for next time. And then we'll be looking forward to some of those things that she will be sharing. I'll be looking forward into my email. Email marketing, it's great. <laughs> Well, if you all happen to celebrate Thanksgiving, then I wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving next week. And if you don't, then I hope you enjoy some great sales at some retail stores. So, or both. Diddle. <laughs> <laughs> well then, Thanks, Jess, Kristen. I will log off and I will um, see you all in a future meeting for sure. Right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate Bye. you, everybody. Bye. Bye.